The Mantis 8 has to be the surprise of the year for me because I like this scooter way more than I thought I ever would. And the more I use it, the more I like it. This quickly turned from a scooter I was cautiously optimistic about in my first impressions video into a scooter I can now recommend wholeheartedly. In fact, this review will probably make me sound like a shill because I have nothing but good things to say about this scooter, but as always, all thoughts and opinions are my own and this review is not paid for or sponsored in any way. So let me tell you why I genuinely like the Cabo Mantis 8 so much. First off, if you haven't seen my first impressions video on the Mantis 8, then go watch that as well. That will go over more specifics about the scooter, whereas this full review will be covering my thoughts about and experience with the Mantis 8 since that first impressions video. This is the dual motor version of the Mantis 8, a specific version that I believe is only available through Cabo USA. I have not tried any of the single motor or pro versions of the Mantis 8, so I can only speak about my experience with this specific model of the Mantis 8. The link to this model of the Mantis is down below in the description and using my coupon code will get you $125 off, putting the scooter under $1000 before tax. I've made just a couple changes to the Mantis 8 since the first impressions video, swapping the stock grips out for a pair of Deity grips I really like, and removing the rubber platform mat and swapping it out for grip tape. However, the factory mat and grips are both totally fine to keep on, I just swap out the grips and grip tape on almost all my scooters. The grip tape swap ended up being harder to do than expected as the mat was glued on quite securely. This at least is a good sign for those that want to keep the mat as I don't think it will peel up easily the way the rubber mat on my old Mantis did. Both of the changes I made were a matter of personal preference and don't fundamentally alter the way the scooter performs. And speaking of performance, the Cabo Mantis 8 is an electric scooter that punches way above its price in just about every category, especially performance. After seeing what $1000 gets you in other electric scooters, the price on this scooter feels ridiculously low. The first thing you notice when you step on the Mantis 8 is that it feels solid and stable. No stem wiggle, no rattling, no flexing, nothing that feels cheap or shortcutty. This is a surprise to me because all it takes is getting on the other Mantis I own, right here next to the 8, to remind me what a flimsy, wobbly, troublesome Mantis can feel like. I will admit that the Mantis 8 has smaller dimensions and will naturally feel more solid and compact compared to larger scooters, but the difference is so big that it can't be the only reason. As I mentioned in my first impressions, many parts and design choices on this Mantis 8 are new and updated compared to my old one that I bought over a year ago, and I have to say that they did a great job on the new design, especially the stem bolt slash locking area and overall construction and assembly quality. Over the past nearly two months of using this scooter, I've felt no decline in the overall quality and stability of the scooter. Something that I failed to highlight properly in the first impressions video was the choice Cabo made to equip this model of the Mantis with tubeless pneumatic tires. This is an A plus decision and one I rarely see. I've had no issues with flats and the ride quality has been reasonable despite the smaller 8 inch wheel size thanks to the added cushion of pneumatic tires. If a scooter that costs $1000 comes with tubeless pneumatic tires, then every other scooter that costs hundreds and thousands of dollars more has no excuse. All the other components on this scooter have been performing satisfactorily. The mechanical brakes, combined with some light electronic braking has suited this scooter well, allowing me to stop quickly but not too aggressively to throw me over the handlebars. I didn't have to mess with the electronic brake P setting at all to get this perfect braking level. The suspension is a bit short and stiff, but is sufficient especially considering its size, weight, and that it's designed to be a road-only scooter. You really shouldn't be doing any off-roading with this scooter, except maybe very tame dirt paths. I mentioned in my first impressions that despite making handlebar swaps on many of my other scooters, the Mantis 8 really didn't feel like it needed wider handlebars because of its smaller size. I actually stand by this statement. I haven't felt any need for better or wider handlebars, and I feel that the stock bars suit the scooter well. The Mantis 8 still retains the issue of making it awkward for those who do want to swap handlebars to do so, due to the strange clamp style and smaller clamp size. You will need to pick up an adapter and a bike stem clamp if you want to do a handlebar swap to more standard diameter bars. My thoughts on the other parts of this scooter are largely unchanged from my first impressions, 
So again, check that video out for a more detailed look at all the components. I've had no issues with any components from top to bottom on the Mantis 8 since then. This scooter shines in terms of performance and is an absolute delight to ride. Acceleration with the twin hub motors is smooth, but packs enough punch to excite. The top speed of 25 to 30 miles an hour feels like such a perfect speed for riders of all abilities, as it sits in that happy medium of feeling fast and fun without edging into sketchy territory. The Mantis 8 feels agile and quick when turning and carving and is a scooter that takes very little time to master and feel comfortable with. If you saw the range test for this scooter, you saw it blow my range expectations out of the water and get almost double the range I was expecting on dual motor turbo mode riding. I got over 17 miles of range with the speed settings maxed out. Pushing the scooter to 20 or even 30 miles should be very doable with a little less aggressive riding. All this performance and quality is bundled up into a relatively light scooter that folds down into a surprisingly small package. This allows the scooter to be carried, stored, and transported with little issue. I recently went on vacation and was able to fit the Mantis 8 and another scooter into the trunk of our little Jetta. I haven't ever been able to get two scooters to fit in the trunk before. In terms of size and weight to performance, I don't think there are many scooters that can compete with the Mantis 8. The Mantis 8 is a scooter that I genuinely feel like I can recommend to everybody. It checks almost every box for me and seems like it would make a great scooter for any type of rider. Commuters can have a reliable, fast, compact scooter that they can bring into work or fold up under a desk or bring on the train or bus. Enthusiasts can have a surprisingly fun and addicting electric scooter that can go with them in any size car. New riders get an extremely approachable scooter that can be used in a lower gear or in single motor mode at first, but then has the power and performance to fulfill the desire for a faster scooter that always inevitably comes later. Those on a budget can rest assured that they are getting the best scooter their thousand dollars can get. Until something better comes along, this will definitely be my recommendation for anyone looking for a scooter around a thousand dollars. In my opinion, it would be worth it for those shopping for entry level scooters at a slightly lower price tier to just spend a little extra to get this scooter. Thanks for watching this review. Go check out the Mantis 8 first impressions and range test videos if you want to see more about this scooter and get subscribed to see more electric scooter content and e-bike content and leave a like if you enjoy this review. I'll see you in the next one. Oh, there you go.